you very much. Okay, so uh, just to uh, share with you the significant and growth opportunity in halal supply chain industry. Okay, so this is the contents of the presentation that I will emphasize on the concept of halal and the significance and opportunities of the growth of supply chain industry uh, in four perspectives. Eh? Okay, recently, I think the industry uh, has witnessed the development of the global Islamic economy okay, uh, in the world. Of course, it is driven by the increasing Muslim consumer demand for dedicated products and services based on the Islamic law, or we call it in Sharia law. Okay, before we go further, I think now I would like to just a little bit explain on the concept of halal. And uh, actually, the main purpose and concept of halal generally is to avoid cross-contamination. So cross-contamination can come from haram sources and also can come from hazardous sources. Okay, from haram sources, of course, it, it, is, it, it can be viewed from the religious perspective. That is, uh, you know, Muslim has to, to make sure to eat on the alcohol-free and pork-free. That is only the permissible according to the Islamic law. But from the trade perspective, you know, from the hazardous sources, we also concerned about the contamination due to the hazardous sources, whether it is combined, yeah, when it is carried combined with hazardous sources, or the halal food becomes, or the food becomes hazardous itself due to, you know, uh, temperature, uh, loss of temperature control. Yeah. So we want to make sure that it is free from bi biological, biological, chemical, and also physical contamination. So from trade perspective, uh, I mean, uh, the, the company normally try to fulfill the demand of the increasing number of Muslim buyers. So basically, the meaning of uh, halal is to, uh, to make sure that consumption of products are not harmful and are safe to be consumed as underlined by Islamic law, and thus is allowable and permissible. And halal also related to quality. Many studies have shown uh, uh, that halal, uh, scientifically, it is related to quality. So it is very significant, especially the recent, you know, many recent issues on major food safety crisis and incidents, and therefore customer is becoming more demanding, consumer, I mean. So the demand on the transparency of food chain, reassurance about wholesomeness of the food through the information of quality. And, uh, and also concern about food safety, eh, quality, origin, authenticity. And in fact, several studies have shown in Europe, for example, the non-Muslim also are interested to, to buy uh, from the Islamic butchers due to the quality aspect. So therefore, the halal meat label eh, uh, is becoming significant because it, it shows a significant display uh, or an outcome of the quality assurance scheme uh, because it serves as reassurance too for Muslim meat consumers. Okay, now we talk about the significance of growth opportunities in the halal supply chain industry. So the first one, we can look from the growing number of Muslim population. Uh, so I think a lot of references comes from this uh, Pew Research Center who studied on the growing number of uh, religions eh, throughout the world. For example, uh, uh, it from his ref from its reference, it shows that Muslims are the only major religious group uh, that increase faster than the world other world's population. So from here, you can see uh, the Muslim to increase number is more than seventy percent. That means uh, from the thirty to it represents thirty two percent growth in overall global population. So it is expected that by 2030, yeah, it's going to be 29.4% out of total, uh, total pop, uh, world population. And in fact, the state of the continuously, yeah, the uh, DINA standard has produced state of global Islamic economy report every year. So from the 2019-2020 report, it also shows that by 2030, the it is expected that Muslims will grow by 2.2 billion. So if industry does not really focus on this part of market, so they might lose, you know, uh, lose the market of Muslim population that is growing. So and other uh, and uh, this report also reported other nine 
uh, factors, uh, core drivers of the Islamic economy. So this uh, diagram shows the, the location, uh, location of the uh, growing Muslim population. From here, we can see a uh, majority of the population comes from the Middle East and also Africa, followed by uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and also Asia Pacific. And the CAGR growth, uh, CAGR growth shows uh, an increase of 8.8% uh, .8 between 2017 to 2021. And uh, expected to increase uh, from 2022 to 2032 is 9.7%. And this is basically the global potential market of halal products. Huh? Uh, that is expected to be USD 2.3 trillion by 2024. So basically, uh, the, the category of halal food is processed FMB 35%, followed by pharmaceuticals eh? and bakery products, cosmetics, eh? uh, nutra uh, sorry, nutraceuticals and primary meat. And the second significant we can see from the growing Islamic economy. Of course, the growing Islamic economy is an outcome of the growing Muslim population. So from here, so from the uh, same report, but 2020-2021 report, it shows an increasing uh, uh, trend, eh? trend of the demand of halal products. From you, If you can see from 2019 to 2024, of course, Islamic finance is the highest, followed by... Uh, Media and creation, eh? media and recreation, halal food, cosmetics, eh? modest fashion, pharma, and travel. So uh, these are the six real economy sectors that is as, uh, estimated going to be the demand from 1.6 billion Muslims. Eh? So the Muslim consumer spending currently is estimated at 2.02 trillion. And the report also highlight the ranking. Uh, every year, it provides the global Islamic indicator ranking. And for this is for 2021, Malaysia uh, has been the top countries of the global Islamic indicator ranking. And this year, 2022, also Malaysia has become the nine for nine consecutive years. Malaysia has become the top of the global Islamic indicator ranking. Okay, so from here, also you can see eh, the performance of every sector eh, from Muslim, friendly, pharma, cosmetic, fashion, recreation, halal food and finance. So this market is very niche, eh, meaning that it focuses on that particular six sectors. Eh. So from here, you can see, of course, as any other sector, you know, uh, most uh, businesses is affected by the pandemic, okay, where uh, it reduces to minus 8.1%. But after that, it pick up again, picks up again 2021 and uh, uh, slowly uh, going down and it's going to pick up again. So it is expected by 2024, it's going to reach 2.4 trillion by 2024. So in terms of investment, eh, investment despite of the global FDI, depressed global uh, foreign direct investment, but government, most government are supporting, eh, supporting in terms of investing uh, in halal sector. Eh? So from here, you can see, of course, the investment, most of investment uh, going to halal food, followed by Islamic finance, travel, tourism, and the rest. But, you know, from all these sectors, six sectors, where is the halal supply chain sector? It does not indicate the halal supply chain sector. But you must remember, uh, how logistics and supply chain is a movement of goods. So as long as you have the increasing you know, uh, trend of the uh, halal demand for halal food, halal pharmaceutical, halal cosmetics. Indirectly, the demand for logistics will increase because logistics is an transport and logistics, the category is an indirect demand. Eh? It, it is increasing when the demand for the food, for the product is increasing. So from here, you, you, you see that it's going halal food increased by 44%, uh, pharmaceutical 45.6% and 48.4%. Okay? Uh, other than that, like fashion, media recreation, perhaps they are not really related to the movement and contamination of the product. Okay? So these are an examples of the complex distribution of uh, goods, movement of goods. 
So it involves, you know, various tiers of manufacturers, distributors that it might expose eh, these products to contamination. So contamination in terms of haram and also contamination in terms of uh, uh, quality of the products. So in terms of the food industry, so uh, that's why I said it's very niche because it only involves food, pharmaceutical and also cosmetic. But cosmetic is not very, uh, very uh, significant because the concern is more on the uh, ingredients, eh? ingredients, uh, the material used to, to produce the cosmetic. But food and also pharmaceutical is very critical because it exposed to, you need to control the temperature especially the cold chain products and also uh, you control the production aspect. So from here you can see, so halal food is, has also expanded beyond ritually slaughtered and permissible meat. So this sector is uh, very significant now because the ingredients of the food and also uh, pharmaceutical no longer sourced solely from the local producers. So due to the complex of the demand and supply of these uh, materials, raw materials. So it led to an increasing role of halal supply chain. Of course, technology is very, uh, become an enabler like in any other sector. And we, sometimes the good of the pandemic is it increased, you know, the technology uh, application and government also supporting the development of dedicated halal hubs. Uh, because they can see uh, the increasing demand and that could be a possible, you know, uh, help to the economy of the country. And here you can see some, this is some statistics of the halal food sector. So you can see that the Muslim spend on food only uh, to 1.37 trillion in 2018 and expected to grow to 5.1%. And, you know, spending in terms of to grow by 6.3%. 1.8 billion Muslim uh, uh, spend on food and beverages and 17% of their income on food. Okay. And the uh, increased projected CIJ growth is 6.3%. Uh, and 52 countries are now with halal regulations. And this is halal pharmaceutical. Uh, 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 I mean, quick snapshot of the halal pharmaceutical sectors in 2020. The hot sectors for growth are halal gelatin, halal vaccine. Halal nutraceuticals and also halal holistic halal based homeopathy. And this is the, the global index economics ranking. Eh? So OIC experienced 1% boost in GDP through halal products trade. And the third aspect of significance you can see from the establishment of halal supply chain standards. So currently we have two halal supply chain standards that is produced by Malaysia and also from SMIC. Because Malaysia uh, established these halal standards in 2010 and has been revised and published the new one, the revised version in January 2019. So what we did is that we bring this uh, Malaysian uh, halal supply chain management system to OIC SMIC. SMIC is Standard Metrology Institute for Islamic Countries. So we bring proposed to SMIC to, to adopt these standards. Of course, we take into consideration all other uh, Islamic countries. Uh, so there's a little bit change in the standards for SMIC. So this uh, standards has been established in published in October 2020. And all countries, not only Muslim countries, other countries has, can also uh, use these standards as guidelines. And this is the committee and I am the chairman of the technical committee 10, Hala Supply Chain. So we meet every year in Istanbul because SMIC is based in Istanbul. So we meet every year to develop the, the standards. So after it is published, the new work item proposal that we, when during the meeting recently, I think Malaysia proposed uh, another new standards, halal, uh, halal supply chain management standard, but halal port, uh, halal uh, port, halal friendly port, sorry, halal friendly ports. So it has been agreed by all uh, uh, SMIC CTC 10 members. And basically, just a little bit explanation on the standards, eh? or oh, I see SMIC 17 standards on halal supply chain. So these standards specifies requirements and qual or quality uh, management system where the organization should demonstrate its ability to consistently provide product that meets Sharia, Sharia Islamic law, customer and applicable regulatory of requirements. 
so it can enhance customer satisfaction through the development of these standards. So these standards also specify the general requirements in the manufacturing and handling of halal products, then it serves as a basic requirement for halal products in general. And of course, these standards need to read together with other OIC SMIC standards that is uh, OIC SMIC 1, for example, halal food, you know, halal quality, OIC SMIC 18, and also OIC SMIC 51, that's hygiene and sanitation or management system. And the fourth significance we can see from the role of halal supply chain in achieving sustainability in the agriculture sector. So from my previous explanation, you can see that actually halal, the main sector for halal, for halal is food, eh? food and beverages and also pharmaceutical. And you can see these two sectors is going to be consistent, whatever happens, you know, recession, pandemic. So these this, this two sectors remain eh, significant. From here, you can see in the agriculture, you can see the value chain. Eh? So it involves a lot of, you know, handling, eh? materials, equipment, uh, people, skill. So, of course, if we don't really take care of these uh, uh, activities, it, the products can lead to contamination. So, even though in the agriculture culture sector, there are studies uh, on sustainable, how to make it sustainable, but you, we add one more aspect that is halal aspect so that we can fulfill the increasing number of Muslim consumers. So this is basically one of the, also the significance of the agriculture sector. For example, agriculture, forestry and land use is second larger emitter of green greenhouse emission by our world data. And food production is responsible for quarter of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Eh? And halal food sector also accounts highest forecasted investment value that is 51.8% by 2024. And so that, that's why the extensive scope of agriculture sector requires a supply chain approach to achieve sustainability of halal produced products. And this is also has been highlighted in the agriculture sector on the issues of logistics. Eh? Logistics and supply chain, we can see the unavailability in a adequate of cold storage facility throughout the world. The logistic issues when you transport, delivery, loading, Staffing containers, shipping containers to terminal, shipping delay, eh? and unskilled workers, eh? bad handling of the agriculture product, inexperienced staff, lack of training on hygiene and food safety, lack of government regulations, lack of availability of processing and sorting technology, and all these lead to food quality and safety issues. Right. So due to these uh, uh, issues. So I think I have another study that I conducted with one of the major ports in the Southern Malaysia. So we conduct this study and we found that uh, uh, our, this halal supply chain uh, can achieve five uh, SDG. I think the, the, the earlier speaker has highlighted on the SDG. So it has highlighted uh, five SDG that is the SDG 3, SDG 9, SDG 10, SDG 12, and SDG 17. So SDG 12 is on the environmental, and SDG 3 and 9 on economic, and 10 and 17 is the social aspect of the components of the SDG. So for example, SDG 12, eh, environmental, to ensure sustainable consumption or production patterns. So the ability of halal supply chain practices to complement that part of supply chain to reduce food waste, and food, uh, food losses eh, along the production and supply chain uh, by reducing contamination. So that could achieve uh, SDG 12. And in terms of economic goal, SDG 3, to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for, uh, for all at all ages. So the foundation, as I have emphasized in the very beginning of the presentation, that the foundation of halal practice is to avoid contamination. So due to that, we make sure that the final consumer would not eat, you know, contaminated uh, food. So therefore, it can ensure good health and well-being. And the third economic goal also is on SDG 9. And as one of the, okay, logistics, one of the component uh, in logistics is transport infrastructure. Say, for example, so uh, SDG 9 is on industry, innovation, and infrastructure. So one of the crucial uh, uh, transport infrastructure is Halal friendly ports. Eh? That's why in uh, SMIC recently we proposed to come up with halal friendly port standards development. 
because it could promote industry innovation through the development of value-added services by the port in halal handling that could offer choices to halal certified manufacturers. Okay, SDG 12 is on social goal. So the social goals is to reduce inequalities. So by uh, addressing the needs of the Muslim dietary requirements that demand them to consume halal food may encourage inclusion of all irrespective of religion. And finally, uh, on the SDG 17 partnership for goals, so logistics supply chain is about entity along the chain. Okay, entity, you must, we, we must work together. That's, um, that's how supply chain, you know, develops. If you don't work together, you work in silo, there's no way supply chain can be formed. So by impl implementing halal supply chain requires cooperation and collaboration among various stakeholders along the supply chain supported by government agencies. Thus, it supports the aspirations to be a Muslim nation through sufficient capacity handling for halal domestic and export cargo. So I think with that, I would like to thank you so much for, uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to present this and for listening. Thank you. Thank you.